Uh, we are seeing rapidly rising case counts of the coronavirus infection here in Philadelphia in what appears to be the beginning of a fall winter surge of the epidemic. Here are some numbers. Uh, since this time yesterday, we have identified 340 new cases of the coronavirus infection in Philadelphia residents, bringing us to a total of 42,924 confirmed cases since the beginning of the epidemic. Now, in addition to that, we have 22 new probable cases diagnosed by the rapid antigen test. Over the past week that ended on uh, October 24th, we averaged 296 cases of this infection per day in Philadelphia residents. That's our highest weekly case count since the first week of May. Now our data is incomplete and that number will even increase beyond that. Now for the previous week that ended on October 17th, we averaged 205 cases per day. And that's the case count, but the percent of people who are tested that are testing positive is also increasing. For the last week that ended October 24th, uh, we're averaging 7.2% of people tested being positive so far. Uh, we expect that that number will rise as some of the laboratories report only positive test results report to us later. That's higher than the 5.1% positive the week before and 5.1% positive the week before that. That 7.2% positive is the highest percent positive that we have seen since the first week of June uh, in this epidemic. To put it in perspective, uh, at the low point of the epidemic uh, in mid-September, 2.8% of people tested were tested positive. Uh, but in the peak of this epidemic on April 5th, 39% of Philadelphia residents who tested were positive. The increase, increases we're seeing in case counts are occurring in every age group uh, from children through people in their 70s. They're increasing in every racial and ethnic group and they're increasing in every zip code in the city. That's what's happening in Philadelphia. The larger context is that we're seeing very rapid increases elsewhere as well. There are all time highs in daily case counts for Pennsylvania as a whole and for the United States as a whole. Now back here in Philadelphia, just a word or two on schools. We're continuing to see isolated cases in students and in staff. Uh, and some schools have had more than one case. Uh, some schools have uh, had quarantines, some schools have temporarily uh, quarantined and gone to all remote learning. Uh, but besides the one school situation that we talked about a week ago, we've had no additional school cluster where it's clear uh, that the, or appears to be clear that this uh, spread occurred within the classroom. Now on schools, um, it's worth noting that the Pennsylvania Department of Education has thresholds for the amount of community cases for which they recommend that schools go to remotely learning only to all online. Those thresholds are more than 100 cases per 100,000 population over seven day period or a percent positivity of more than 10%. Now, as of last week, Philadelphia just now just barely reached above the first threshold of 100 per 100,000 population. Uh, but as you saw with the 7.1%, we're still below the 10% threshold. Uh, now, in the wake of that, a number of schools have contacted us to ask if they are required to go to remote learning only. At this point here in Philadelphia, we are not recommending that schools that are currently offering in-person learning to stop to do that. We're not requiring them to do that. Now, some schools may choose to do that on their own, um, but we're not requiring that at the moment. Uh, we will watch the data and we may change that recommendation if case counts and the percent positive continue to rise. Now with the rising number of cases, uh, we're also seeing an increase in number of people who are going to hospitals. And so with that, we need to watch our hospital capacity. We wanna make sure our hospitals don't get overwhelmed. The state has a database that's on their public website that says how many patients are currently hospitalized in each, with COVID in each county in the state uh, and has for Philadelphia 211 patients currently hospitalized, uh, again, with COVID. Now that number is increasing. It hit a low point of about 90 in late September. But to put it in uh, perspective for comparison, uh, the hospitals in Philadelphia peaked in the spring epidemic wave at a little more than a thousand COVID patients in all hospitals combined on April 24th. So with 211 in the hospitals right now, we do have uh, many more that they can handle, they can handle more. However, we still need to watch this closely over the next few months. What's happening with deaths? Uh, since this time yesterday, we've identified five new deaths from the coronavirus infection, bringing us to a total of 1,864 since the beginning of the epidemic. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been averaging about 10 deaths per week, and we're not seeing an increase tied to this epidemic wave yet. Uh, now, and that uh, is worth me backing up a little bit on that. One positive change we've seen since the beginning of the epidemic is that we're seeing fewer deaths 
for every case identified than we did early on uh, in the spring. So in the spring, there was about one death for every 15 cases that were identified. But in August and September, there's been about one death for every 60 cases identified. And you might ask why that's the case. Well, first, we are identifying more uh, cases of infection in people who have no symptoms or have mild symptoms as we're doing more testing. These are people who would not have been diagnosed in the wave in, in the spring because testing wasn't that much available. Second, the people who are infected tend to be younger than people who were infected in the spring wave. Third, uh, even among people who go to the hospital with a severe infection, uh, their mortality rate appears to be going down. So we think that the treatment of this infection in hospitals in, is improving as the hospitals have gotten more familiar with how to treat this infection and as their medications and tools have gotten better. And fourth, there's been a suggestion, not proven, uh, that when people wear masks and when they keep a distance from people, that even if they do become infected, that they're getting a lower dose of the virus uh, than they would if they weren't wearing a mask. And so if, even if they have the infection, that infection is less severe. Can't say that that's true, but it certainly may be true. And that's yet another reason for everybody to be wearing masks right now. Now this lower case fatality rate though is not a reason to abandon our safety precautions. This disease absolutely still can be deadly. Even if a small fraction of the people with this infection uh, are die from it, if we have hundreds or thousands of people infected per day, that still leads to many different deaths. We are seeing an increase in deaths in, from COVID in Pennsylvania and the United States as a whole with this new wave. And we expect to see an increase in deaths here in Philadelphia in the next one to two weeks, just based on the rising case counts that we're seeing. But we will pay closer attention now to hospitalizations and deaths and not just cases when making our policy decisions. So that's where we are with the epidemic. Uh, what do we know about where and how the virus is spreading in the city right now? Well, here's what we're learning from our case interviews that are done as part of contact tracing. Uh, we know the virus is spreading within households, it's spreading among relatives and among friends, and it's spreading in social gatherings. This is, for example, when relatives are visiting each other to help take care of children, or they're visiting to have, take care of a person who has a fever, or sleepovers amongst teenagers, or the pizza party after soccer practice, or carpools, or friends getting together to watch football games on television, or weddings and bridal showers. Now, these social gatherings, particularly celebration gatherings, are very dangerous because people get very close and because they tend not to wear masks because they want to look good for the pictures. Now, in addition to that, there's some suggestion now that there, some spread might be occurring in restaurants. Here's what we have on that, is that we went carefully through the interviews we did for our cases as part of contact tracing. We looked for the percent of those case interviews where words were included in the narrative, suggesting restaurant dining. That percentage increased from 11% before we allowed indoor dining to 16% afterwards. We can't be certain, but certainly there's a possibility that some of the spread then is occurring in restaurants. The overall message though, is that the virus is spreading now rapidly in households, family gatherings, and social gatherings, maybe in workplaces, and maybe in restaurants. The risk is increasing now with the colder weather and the drier air, and more people being indoors. And it appears that then that this virus, COVID, is following the same pattern of other respiratory viruses like influenza that rise throughout the fall and peak typically in January or February. With that in mind, we anticipate further rapid increases of this infection in Philadelphia which means we're entering a difficult, dangerous period of this epidemic, possibly the worst period of the entire epidemic. Now we hope to have a vaccine soon, but much of this surge will happen before the vaccine arrives, which means we need to step up our safety precautions now and hang on to it just a little bit longer until the vaccine does arrive and we can protect people from this infection. So with that in mind, what we are going to do at the city is first to continue to expand access to testing so that people can identify quickly if they have this infection, so they make sure that they isolate themselves from others to try to prevent spread to others. Second, we're gonna shift our contact tracing work from which we're trying to do all case management of all individuals to sometimes simply giving guidelines to others about how they can do their own contact tracing. We simply don't have the manpower to do individual case management for every case that's being reported today, given the very large numbers. Then we're gonna do everything we can to protect people who are particularly vulnerable to this uh, infection, the vulnerable populations. That it means especially people in nursing homes, means people in other congregate living facilities, 
and it means vulnerable people who may be living at home and getting home health services. Then if we identify specific settings where we have evidence of substantial spread, uh, we may restrict or prohibit those activities. Now we have some res restrictions that are in place that we never released before, and we're not imposing any new restrictions today, uh, but we are considering a range of options. Now just a couple of words on what businesses should be doing with this epidemic wave. Uh, first, let me just say, I understand this is a very difficult time for businesses. It's been months when their income has taken a big hit. And we want businesses to bring in more revenue also. Uh, we want more people to have jobs. That's good for our health. It's good for our city. But the businesses must understand that the business success is tied to the city's success in combating the epidemic. If the epidemic continues to get worse, that's worse for everyone. So we're asking for your help now as businesses in reinforcing the safety rules especially the rules around masks and distancing. People come in contact with all sorts of businesses from retail store to many other types. Uh, and we know that not all the time are people wearing masks. You are in a position to reinforce those safety rules. If you do that, that'll help us all get past this epidemic to survive in our health and also to get businesses back on their feet. And what should Philadelphia residents do right now? Well, because the spread is happening mostly in private settings, our success depends mostly on what Philadelphia residents do on their own. Uh, so first of all, work from home if at all possible. Don't go to the workplace based on evidence we have that this may be spreading in workplaces. Second, stay away from others unless it really is necessary. Don't have a get together after soccer practice. Don't join your friends to watch football games on TV. Stay at home as much as you can. Then I have to say this, and I know this is difficult. We're recommending that people cancel their planned family holiday gatherings. Uh, we're not gonna get past this epidemic by Thanksgiving or by Hanukkah or by Christmas. Family gatherings right now are simply very dangerous. Now in normal now, in times, normal times nothing better, better have, have, have big, a big family, family gathering, gathering holidays, but not this year because these, these are not normal times. And finally, Again, wear a mask when you're around anyone who's not your household member. First, you should assume that anyone you come in contact with, anyone you come in contact with has the infection. If they aren't wearing a mask, ask them to. And then assume that you have the infection and don't know it, and you should wear a mask so you should protect others. My question is for you, Dr. Frawley. With the, with the amount of cases rising in the state, do you have concerns about high school sports still being played and also the NCAA just came out saying that the college basketball season will start on November 25th. What are your concerns about that? Uh, I have concerns about a, a wide range of activities that are occurring now where the, the virus may be spreading, including sports activities. Uh, you know, we, we have worked with uh, colleges here around the protocols for basketball, uh, but uh, with the cases rising, uh, we have to be concerned about what makes sense to do when we get along, get around to basketball season. David? Jim? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Very good. Let's go now to Laura McChrystal of the Inquirer. Hey, a quick question for Dr. Farley. You mentioned that you're considering additional restrictions. Um, so I'm just looking for clarification. Is that something, can we expect additional restrictions in the coming days or are you still undecided on that? We're undecided around it. We're considering it now. We haven't, haven't made any decisions. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And now let's go to Martin Pratt of Philly YBN. This question, this uh, two questions, one for Eva. Uh, going back to the eviction mediation uh, court situation, uh, two of our uh, viewers asked us to ask this question. Specifically, if you received an eviction notice, the eviction proceeding is happening, What's the process for a tenant to do to get their landlord? This is eviction that's already in process. It hasn't seen a court date yet. But what's the? Do they have to talk to your landlord and get the landlord to come to the court, and the landlord has to fill out the information, or do they just fill out paperwork? And where can they go to ask these type of questions on the city website? Um, so my suggestion would be that they go either to Philly Tenant dot org website um, and that phone number there's a tenant hotline is 
443-2500, and they can help them sort out their various options. Some of them may be eligible um, to fill out a declaration with the federal CDC moratorium, others may not be. They can help connect them with additional legal services. Real quick, that CDC moratorium, it does affect Philadelphia? Is it just for Pennsylvania or is it affects the city of Philadelphia? It's, it's CDC, it's national, but it's only in certain circumstances and the tenant right. has to complete an, um, a declaration and the cause of eviction has to be non-payment of rent. So there are certain, it's, it's not 100% applicable to every situation. Excellent, I'll be emailing you for the numbers we had to get last week. Um, uh, Dr. Farley, real quick. Uh, you said that you saw possibly some correlation to rising numbers in restaurants. I was wondering of that number, did you see any rise in staff that were actually uh, staff members of the restaurants? We do ask occupation and we haven't seen any clear increase in the number or percent of cases that are a report that they work in restaurants. And is that across also other uh, frontline workers, a grocery store, uh, hospital workers? Correct. Correct. No increase there. Right. Now, the, the, the numbers are fairly small for each of those categories. And so, you know, small changes may not be noticed, but we're not seeing any clear increases in those occupation groups. OK, that's it. Thanks, Mike. You got it. Thanks, Martin. Let's move quickly to Claudia Lauer of the Associated Press. Hey, how are you? Uh, I, I just have two quick questions and I apologize if I missed these. Um, Dr. Farley, I was looking for any numbers you have on the, the increase in hospitalizations. And then you had mentioned um, possibly teaching people to do self-contact tracing. Uh, I was wondering if you could elaborate just a little bit on that. Yeah, so we have 211 people with uh, COVID hospitalized in Philadelphia hospitals as of this morning, uh, reported on the state's database. And uh, for comparison at the peak in the spring, we had over a thousand people with infection in hospitals. Um, you know, I, I didn't say self-contact tracing. I did say that there, uh, we may, we're going to be trying to shift uh, to in, from individually case managing every case and every contact to some guidance. Uh, and our, our, so our staff will be talking to people when they do the case investigations and they may tell people, okay, you need to notify these contacts because we don't have time to do it. Uh, we may notify those contacts. But thank you. Okay, let's go uh, to Nina Feldman of WHYY. Hi, Dr. Farley, you mentioned expanding testing. Can you talk a little bit more about what that's gonna look like, where and by how much? Uh, yeah, you know, we, we've been working to expand testing really since the beginning. Uh, we're now up, I've lost track, but it's over 60 different testing sites. Uh, there will be probably a small number of additional testing sites that'll come online with the and we've been funding organizations to set up additional testing sites. Uh, we also uh, will be uh, making rapid testing more available. So some of these sites will have the ability to give people an answer in a matter of minutes rather than uh, 24 hours later. And I should say overall, you know, we, we are, uh, as of last week, we did about 4,100 tests per day. Uh, we've long had a goal of getting up to 5,000 tests per day. Uh, so we were at 2,500 uh, just a few weeks ago. Got it. And then one other detailed question on the contact tracing issue. Um, I understand the numbers wise that you wouldn't be able to get to all of the contacts of each of individual case. Is it still the goal to reach every case for, by, for the contact tracers by the city? With the numbers we're having now, we're not gonna be able to reach every case either. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nina. And uh, this is last call right now for Dr. Farley and any questions David Melangelo, let's go back to you real quick. Dr. Farley, have you heard any updates about how the Eagles have done so far with the about them allowing the fans in through the first two home games so far? Any result of the any cases spiking from that? And we don't have any clear evidence of uh, spread uh, amongst people in the stadium. We have heard about uh, people with infection in the stadium, um, and we have some concerns about that, but no clear evidence of spread in the stadium right now.